genetically modified T cells expressing an anti-CD19 chimeric antigen receptor. Now this results in response rates of about 90% in uh, children with relapsed refractory CD19 positive ALL. So cytokine release syndrome is sometimes severe enough to be uh, called a, a cytokine storm is probably the most significant of the uh, treatment related toxicities. We are here at ASCO and we are talking about optimizing chimeric antigen receptor T cell therapy for adult patients with relapsed or refractory ALL. And to do that, I am with Dr. Noel Fry, who is an MD and an assistant professor of medicine at the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. First off, thank you very much. And some background first. Why did you do this study? Yeah, no, so it's it. So, um, so the field in general has been very excited with the outcomes we've seen for our patients with relapsed and refractory ALL who uh, do very well with the chimeric antigen receptor T cells. And uh, our center and many centers have had very high response rates, as you just mentioned, and it's been extremely exciting. Unfortunately, uh, the treatment does come with significant treatment-related side effects. Right. And as you mentioned, I think the most significant treatment-related side effect is this cytokine release syndrome. So I think now we're at a stage in the field where a big part of our goal going forward is to make this uh, therapy safer while maintaining the high efficacy rates that we've seen. Um, and the data that I'm presenting here today is one such approach. Uh, and basically what we have found in adult patients with relapsed and refractory ALL, um, and we've treated uh, 30 to date at, at UPenn, is that uh, the ability to tolerate cytokine release syndrome might not be quite as, um, quite as successful as some of our pediatric patients. Um, and what we found is that in our 30 patients, we've treated patients with varying doses and schedule of the CART-19 cells. And what we found is that with a single high dose infusion, uh, patients have very high response rates but three of the patients that we treated in that manner actually had early treatment-related deaths that were at least in part attributable to CRS. Um, what we found is when we gave a single infusion at a lower dose, safety was restored, but efficacy really dropped down, where we had 70 to 90 percent response rates, response rates dropped down to the 30 percent. Um, and so the approach that we're doing now, and what I wanted to highlight in our presentation today, is that we plan for a high total treatment dose, but we actually fractionate how we deliver the dose over three days. So we give 10% of the cells on day one, 30% on day two, and 60% on day three. Wow, okay. and, and what this allows us to do is after we give the 10% dose of cells, if the patient starts to experience early signs or symptoms of CRS, we actually hold that second and or third dose. So this dosing scheme allows us to modify our delivery of the drug, for lack of a better word, um, in direct response to toxicity. Um, and in about in, in, in this, and this approach has allowed us to maintain very high response rates, um, but fortunately it um, has resulted in CRS that is very manageable. So in making this safer, you can also still make it effective. Yes, that is, that is I think, one of an important take home message from this approach. So what are you gonna do from here on out? So it's a great question. I think um, at our program currently in the adult ALL uh, population, we continue to treat patients in this manner. But I think in the field going forward in general, a big focus is going to be on how to optimize safety but continue the high efficacy. So dosing and delivery of the cells is one such approach, but there are other attractive approaches. Um, one approach is to deliver a dose of cells in, res in, re in response to the patient's baseline disease burden. And you actually can give a higher dose of cells more safely if someone has a lower disease burden. The other, another potential approach is to deliver your anti-cytokine directed therapy, which is tocilizumab, earlier in the clinical course of CRS to see if that helps to keep patients safer but doesn't result in a decrease in the response rate. Are you still excited about this approach? I'm very excited about this approach. Um, I think um, I've, you know, it's it's been it's been a wonderful thing to be a part of to 
to be able to provide uh, something so novel that can be helpful for patients. Um, but I'm extremely respectful of this approach as well and want to con continue to work towards making it as safe as possible, which also means you can offer it to larger numbers of patients, maybe patients that are sicker or older, um, if we can work on the safety aspect of it as well. Thank you, Dr. Fry. And also, please look around for the rest of our ASCO coverage for Ash Clinical News. I'm Rick McGuire, Executive Editor for American Medical Communications.